One question that has concerned a number of Jungian community members is not necessarily how to type other people, but a more personal and immediately important question, how do I type myself? Some people are very confident in their type assessment from when they first receive it to onwards. Others, however, are not and feel that their Jungian identity is always elusive and they can never seem to rest assured in one of the types. In this video, I'm going to try to present primarily the function axes in a much more detailed way than I did in part two. This, I hope, will help make the types more recognizable so that people can feel much more assured in their identity, according to Young. I will also go over how to determine which functions are likely more dominant in your personality later in the video. I have only one word of advice before I begin. I think the best way to become confident in your type is simply to act like it. In other words, to pick the type you think works best and then stick to it. Embrace one of the types, pick a side as it were, and don't waver in this conviction until the evidence has become truly undeniable. Maybe you will choose the quote wrong type at first, but I think the choosing one type over another is the first step and can help accelerate the process. Now I will begin by describing the judgment axes. FE slash TI and TE slash FI because I think these are the most recognizable axes. If you have an FE slash TI axis, then you probably relate more to the idea of being lost in a foreign land and trying to learn the language and customs of the people around you so that you can regain the blessings of human interaction. If you are TI dominant, your focus is on learning the language and customs. In other words, getting control of or getting your mind wrapped around the concepts and underlying theories behind how things work. If you are FE dominant, your focus is more on speaking the language and practicing the customs themselves so as to obtain desired effects from others. In other words, to truly communicate and usually to communicate in such a way that promotes harmony, goodness, and comfort in others. If you don't repress either TI or FE, but have them smashed between two perceiving functions, as it were, then you can probably relate to both of those ideas very well. If you have an FE slash TI axis, odds are you greatly resonate with the idea of a group of people overcoming their differences and working together as a team. The barriers are broken down between them. They are not reserving anything from the others. In a work environment, whether or not you actually like group work, you cannot abide discord among people. You want work to be a well-oiled machine that makes sense and isn't interrupted by people's personal interests or feelings getting in the way. FETI doesn't understand it when people do things only to express themselves or champion some passion within themselves, especially when these actions seem to promote discord or when they are done without due consideration or attention to others' interests or for the common good. This is considered highly petty and self-centered. FETI is, even with TI dominance, to some degree attuned to the value atmosphere of an environment. At the very least, you are naturally attentive to and consider it a priority to some degree to accommodate this atmosphere in order to get things done, even if you don't agree with the values in this environment. It presents a real barrier to you that you have to navigate. In other words, if you want to get something done in Rome, then you have to go through the proper channels and work with things on their level. If you want to work with certain people, then you must adapt your presentation to cater appropriately to them so that you can both help them and accomplish your own agenda. What this ultimately means is that you feel that morality, duty, or right or wrong is something outside of you that you subject yourself to. You think in terms of rules which you must align with or accommodate into your life. You don't find anything valuable or desirable within yourself to start with. Your value comes from the degree to which you align yourself with the truth, causing the light to more brightly resonate within you. But the light does not come from you. It is for this reason that FETI has no compunction against accommodating others or changing themselves in their presentation for others. This isn't seen as insincere because there is nothing within yourself to be insincere to. But there are things outside of yourself that you can be insincere to. And that includes not helping others to feel comfortable when you should. What this all comes down to is that you feel value, warmth, light, goodness, and desirability is all objective. 
It's something that can be measured and obtained, understood by all, and accessible to all through the proper methods, which anyone can understand. It's something that resides in objects, which you must comprehend and harmonize with, and not something within you already. On the other hand, if you have a TEFI axis, then you probably relate more to the idea of being lost in a frozen tundra, trying to carve out a living for yourself and keep yourself warm. If you are FI dominant, then your focus is on building the fire and keeping it going, blowing on the coals to gain more heat. If you are TE dominant, then you are more concerned with building shelter, with carving out an area for yourself, with fighting off dangers and exploring, and otherwise getting control of the environment. Though you may relate to both of these ideas simultaneously, which may mean you don't repress either, and they reside in the middle of your stack. You may have noticed that one of the biggest differences between this axis and the previous axis is that the TEFI axis sees objects only for their properties, possessing no warmth or desirability in themselves, but only properties that can be combined scientifically to get certain results. If they are to have desirability, it is because an individual granted them this desirability but then they are only desirable to that person and not necessarily to you. So we see that things are nicely reversed here. The TEFI axis wants nothing less than to be assimilated into some whole as the FETI axis seems to want, because for TEFI this means freezing to death. The world is cold and lifeless. Warmth comes from within. The individual endows the world with value and meaning and not the other way around. As such, you feel a strong need to individuate yourself, that is, to affirm and express those things you find valuable, aka building a fire and keeping it going. If you're going to do something or going to like something, you have to decide yourself that you like it. Morality and truth must grow up inside of you first, because a part of your own fire. You can't just adopt a new regimen, you have to nourish it first. The world comes to you, you don't come to the world. What's more, with this mentality, the world is naturally malleable, and logic to you is the practical, straightforward method of building, destroying, and otherwise changing things, demolition and molten creation, getting things done, all of which might seem barbaric to the FI dominant, but that is still the way that they think. TEFI is much rougher with things, not because they themselves are rough, but because that's just how the world seems to them. If you want to build something out of clay, then you have to be forceful with it. You can't be afraid of damaging the clay or damaging yourself. You have to overcome your inhibitions about that and dig your hands in. And this difference can pit the TEFI and the FETI axes against each other. So, as a quick summary, FETI is harmonizing, comes to the world, tries to align with the world and navigate the world, sees value as something already present in objects, while properties are abstract and understood relatively by the individual. They are attuned to the feeling atmosphere of a situation, seek to promote cooperation, accommodation, and harmony in that situation, and like water, prefer to adapt their own form to better slide through a situation. TEFI, however, is individuating, requiring the world to come to them, because they see value as something endowed on objects by the individual, while properties are purely objective and already present in objects, making them malleable like clay. They seek to express and live according to their own values, and accomplish goals by shaping and changing the outside world to fit their needs, rather than adapting to it. I hope that I have not let any personal biases taint these descriptions. I will now move on to the perceiving axes. In part two of the series, I related the SENI axis to a sort of overhead projector that takes the object itself and blows up its image onto a large screen. SE is focused on the object itself, while NE is focused on the enlarged blurry image. In reverse of this, I described the NESI axis as a telescope. NE looks out into the distance at the blurry mountain range, or perhaps the distant moon, while SI is the narrowed, sharpened image found in the telescope eyepiece. Now, if you have SENI, this means that you view the attributes of objects, 
that is, your perception and experience of objects, as inherent in the objects. You believe that the attributes, the color, sound, texture, history, position, relationships, whatever, you believe that the attributes of an object are purely objective matters, i.e., anybody can clearly see that this thing is red and smooth. If someone is seeing something different, then that means that one of us has something messed up with our vision. Objects are the way they are, and the SENI axis naturally assumes that anybody with working senses and wits can see that. The attributes of objects, what the object is, is not a matter open for discussion or subjective interpretation. It is not a personal matter at all, but a simple objective one. The ball is red and smooth. The blood tastes like salt with some iron. The president went to this country and did these things, and that caused these things. Each of these, quote, objects is taken by Essie on its own without any subjective baggage or interpretation or memories or personal experiences whatsoever invested into it. It is truly objective. On the other end, however, N.I. sees the possibilities and associations of objects, what objects could or may be, as very much a matter of discussion and subjective relativity. Certainly the ball is red and smooth, that's what it actually is, anybody can see that, but what the ball could be, or what it might be said to represent, or what it is a manifestation of, is subject to an infinite number of interpretations depending on your relative position to it, because it depends on what subjective experiences you are investing into it. You don't see the ball's possibilities on their own, but in relation to other things you've seen before, other little ideas and observations that you relate it to. You can be infinitely imaginative about it. Intuitions, possibilities, imaginations about things are all invested into objects by the subject. None are inherent in the object itself. The only thing inherent in objects is their actual attributes. For this reason, S-E-N-I is naturally intense, direct, visceral, committed, dogmatic, all because it views objects directly, and from one object you can come up with an infinite number of ideas and possibilities and associations. So, if you have an SENI axis, you probably try to find the perspective on a topic that provides the most yield of ideas and understanding right now, or else the most yield of visceralness and vividness right now. And then you may have trouble or reservations when shifting entirely over to a new point of view, because you feel like you're leaving a bunch of unexplored possibilities behind. SENI has the intensity of milking the topic dry, of hitting the nail directly on the head, of getting an idea out of yourself in as pure and genuine a form as possible. NI has a way of stirring or ruminating possibilities in its head for a while until it starts to become something new or starts to make sense to it. SE sees one thing and NI stirs it around for a while, and then there's the need to get the ethereal ideas out. Whether SE or NI is more dominant, it is the same process. There is intensity, a sense of longing even, associated with the perception a sense of really getting into something, of trying to express something beautiful, or of experiencing something real. You get into things, you get into them directly. You appreciate people being direct and plain and trying to express a pure idea right in front of you. Now the reverse of this is the NESI axis. NE views possibilities and associations as not a matter of discussion or subjective interpretation. The possibilities, associations, imaginative connections of an object are inherent in the object. And if you can't see it, it's because your mind is slow or you just aren't looking at it right. NE navigates the world of possibilities as nimbly and as fluidly as SE navigates the here and now. You just can pick up on things, on patterns and associations, much faster than anyone else seems to, including NI users, which can at times be frustrating for you, like everyone else is holding you down. SI, however, is not nimble like SE. SI views the attributes of objects and what they actually are and look like as a matter of discussion and subjective interpretation. If you have an NESI axis, you likely view the colors, sounds, or general experience of an object as something personal to you, something you've assimilated into yourself and have interpreted yourself. 
The best way for an SE and I axis to understand this, I think, is to imagine the workings of their own and I, the way it ruminates ideas, stirs them around, tries to figure out by relating them to other ideas and combining and recombining, uh, except instead of fascinating ideas and associations, replace these with sights, sounds, events, and actual experiences of objects. But they're still floating around in the mind in a similar fashion, i.e., the ball isn't just red and smooth, it's red like the eyes of my pet rabbit, and it's smooth like the playground I'd go to as a child. I don't just see the ball, I see the playground and the rabbit too, and probably a dozen more complex things, not just sights and sounds, but events, experiences, sensations. Just as an eye, when it sees the red ball, might think, it's red and smooth, and the way it sits there reminds me of this idea I had when watching a black and white television way back when, that what if the film was black and white except for this one red object? Wouldn't that be neat? In any case, you will probably notice that while the NE and SE functions are nimble and quick on their feet, as it were, because they are dealing with what to them is objectively obvious, the SI and NI functions need time to process what they see to assimilate it into themselves, precisely because what they see is not objective, but is a matter of subjective interpretation, and they need time to do this, to relate what they see to other things they've seen, and thus figure out what it means to the subject, rather than just as an object in itself. So, if you have an NESI axis, you are generally indirect. That is to say, you don't have such an intense and invested relationship with the world, at least not as SE and I does. The relationship you have is not longing like SE and I tends to be. You don't feel that longing to get things out of you, or that same sense of deliciousness of ideas, or of getting ideas out in their purest form, or really getting your hands into the subject that doesn't really ring any bells for you. Rather, you approach topics in a broad, multifaceted manner. You don't dive right in. You may not think that's possible or advisable, or even makes any sense. You prefer a more elegant method, if you will, of cautiously and meticulously feeling your way around to the subject, getting at all its angles equally, building a full 3D rendering of it. You get at things with well-built and well-placed metaphors and redirections through sublimating methods. You're a bit like an archaeologist in this way, and a skilled one at that. You know how to efficiently and effectively uncover the bones or artifacts completely without damaging them. While SE and I may at times seem to leap into the excavation site and start tearing the ground up in their excitement, ruining the whole thing. But with NESI, there is a sense of indirectness, cleverness, of going around and under, a sort of elegance and well-built and well-placedness of cleverness and charm, which is in stark contrast to SENI, which is direct and visceral and not modest in this way. I hope that these descriptions so far have been useful and haven't just clouded the issue, and I hope I've accurately portrayed things with the hope that you feel more confident in your association with a certain judgment and perceiving access, let's look at how you might figure out their position and order. If you have chosen two axes, these will place you in one of the four categories which I've displayed on the screen for you. So, finding yourself in one of these categories, one way to further narrow down your choices is to determine if you are more preferentially a judger or a perceiver. That is, are you a judger, meaning are you more interested in organizing your understanding of the environment, of figuring out how to determine the sensibleness or the rightness and wrongness of what's around you, or having a more immediately active mentality towards the world? Or before this, are you a perceiver, meaning you are more interested in observing the world first and seeing things and experiencing things fully before seeking to organize them on any scale of right or wrong, sensible or nonsensible? taking a more passive, receptive mentality towards the world, learning, pondering, or experiencing. Let's then say, for instance, that you feel you are preferentially a judger. Then all we have left to do is determine if you are more preferentially thinking or feeling, keeping in mind, however, that we are dealing with specific attitudes of thinking and feeling. What I would suspect should happen here is one function should seem more definitely pleasing than the other because you're repressing one of them. Then, if you feel confident in this, then you've got your type. 
If, for instance, you relate more to fi in this situation, you would be infp. I hope this has been a useful video, and remember, I think it's best to just settle down in a type for now, if anything else. But you don't have to do that, I'm just a hobbyist. If you have any other questions or concerns, just comment below or message me directly. Um, if you didn't really like the video, just tell me that. Um, it's a little bit more ragtag than I'd like it to be, at least in my opinion. But um, in any case, thank you for watching. I hope you guys had great holidays, and I'll be continuing to make videos every Thursday in the future. So, thank you.